Lovely to be here at Google Benkin today. Um, so I'm Dan, I am a poet, as it hopefully, so yes, it's working, excellent. Uh, I'm gonna perform a couple of poems for you today and talk about the role of AI and creativity. Uh, first of all, a little bit of context. Uh, this is a poem called In These Days. In these days, in these status updating, no time for waiting days. In these message texting, file indexing, chatbot talking, monitor gawking days. In these Bluetooth-enabled, high-speed cabled, iPod-shuffling, Uber-summoning, headphone-wearing, Turing-testing, robot-rising, targeted advertising days. In these Twitter-trolling, opinion-polling, file-sharing, auto-correcting, hoverboards exploding, Windows-downloading, emoji-using, journalist-abusing, hot-take-writing, social media-fighting, big data-mining, Tinder-swiping, virtue-signaling, online-petitioning, iCloud-leaking, firewall-breaching days. In these genome sequencing, BuzzFeed frequenting, Xbox gaming, virtual maiming, PlayStation playing, indoor staying, Spotify listening, WhatsApp pinging, 3D printing, Netflix chilling, Facebook friending, GIF sending, email spamming, forum banning, car self-driving, ask hive minding, days. Days of CCTV and the on-demand economy of viral memes and learning machines of Pokemon Go and infinite scroll of VR headsets and selfie regrets of voicemail hacking and iPhone tracking of echo chambers and professional gamers of political clicktivism and pics of kittens, of clickbait headlines and infringement fines, of there's an app for that, and constant smartphone taps of YouTube celebrities and Instagram selfies, of paper clicks and post-truth politics, of hey Siri-ing and hashtag everything. I sometimes stop. I stop. I stop. I put down my phone. Turn off my computer. I go out into the wilderness. Breathe the fresh mountain air. Let spring water run through my fingers. Feel the sun's warmth against my upturned face. The thick grasses of the plains tickling my bare toes. I close my eyes and I listen for the subtle sounds of nature. And I think, God, I wish I could check Facebook. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so for those of you enjoying this, uh, this beautiful scenery here, uh, this is rendered from Grand Theft Auto V. Um, <laughs> it's wonderful, isn't it? It's quite lovely. Um, so look, as I hope that poem sort of somewhat contextualised, we're living in a very fast-paced, constantly-go world. Uh, and I think we are consuming data and creating data at the fastest rate we have ever done. It's a furious thing we're making. And poetry is often quite slow and thoughtful, uh, and it's hard to kind of make poetry in this world. As Billy mentioned, we have short attention spans these days, and poetry often takes its time. It, it works slowly. Um, we, we are constantly shifting gear. We are looking at uh, terrible tragedy on the one hand, signing petitions for things, and then suddenly we're looking at kitten pictures and, and fun dogs, and it's really hard to kind of make poetry in this world. So I've tried to write a poem that I hope will appeal to the kind of generation we live in. Uh, I think one of the big problems is the clickbait headline. Uh, so I've written a poem that I hope will appeal to everyone who... Anyone here click on clickbait? Anyone? No, you all do, just none of you will admit it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so this is a poem called Clickbait. Uh, it goes like this. After the first line of this poem, you'll never believe what happens next. <laughs> Three lines in and I was completely hooked and that thing you assumed to be true, well... If you only do one thing today, make sure it's listened to the end of this poem. Only the most awesome people do this. This is one poem you shouldn't miss. After all, does this leading question lead anywhere significant? Find out after the line break. You need to hear what this poem does next. This poem, written by a five-year-old kid who is way wiser than most adults. Because there's 26 things only people who hear this poem will understand. And if you thought it was clickbait, think again. I mean, what kind of poetry person are you? Listen to this poem to find out, or listen to this celebrity reading the poem, as the shocking truth hits home for one reason and one reason only. Click me. 
Learn to write something like this in just 12 seconds. Meet the words behind some of the most successful poems of all time. The results are completely unexpected. As nine weird things about poetry you didn't know till now are explained by this one guy who makes a powerful point so eloquently it will somehow change the world and you will cry or laugh or shrug before clicking on the next poem, which is all about Miley Cyrus. <laughs> Always. Let's talk about how this poem speaks to you and the way that little words can have huge impact. This is why most people don't get poetry. And the next time someone says to you pretty much anything about poetry, just link them to this poem like it applies to every conversation, answers every question you ever had about anything. What kind of 90s feminist sandwich filling Disney character are you? <laughs> listen to this poem to find out. I dare you to listen to this poem and not think, what? And usually you'd be right, but prepare to have your mind blown because this poem has an important message that everyone should hear and it will inspire you. It will inspire you. It will inspire you. It will inspire you or not. Just click it. Thank you. So I think poets suffer an existential threat from the fast paced world we live in, the lack of attention span we have. I also think we face a threat from algorithms and particularly algorithmic use in artificial intelligence. So this is a quick definition of what an algorithm is. Essentially, you plug in some data to it and it spits out a result for you. Uh, algorithms are used um, across the world. Uh, I think we encounter them every day. Uh, I think we most see them on Amazon quite appropriately. You often get recommended products based on your previous shopping history. These are some of mine. Uh, as you can see, uh, first recommended by an algorithm, first hundred words. It's quite offensive for a poet uh, <laughs> to recommend that as uh, the product. Um, this fishing line, I'm vegetarian, I, I don't eat fish. Um, I, not that outdoorsy, don't know if you can tell that about me. Um, Amazon recommended that for me. Uh, these Crocs, um, these kids Crocs, um, bright pink. Uh, I have size 12 feet. I don't have children. Um, well done, Amazon. Uh, this Pokemon Go t-shirt, uh, that's a Team Instinct t-shirt. Team Valor, obviously. <laughs> oh, Team Instinct are in, we can tell. Uh, fair enough. Um, and finally, this uh, monkey eye mask, uh, which I did buy, so that was a good recommendation <laughs> by Amazon. Um, so these algorithms are a little bit imprecise. They kind of work sometimes, they kind of don't work as well. Um, but algorithms form the basis of artificial intelligence. Oh, I'm going to skip over that because we're running out of time. Uh, as Callum mentioned, uh, Gary Kasparov uh, famously played IBM's Deep Blue uh, and lost against that uh, AI playing computer. Uh, and more recently, Lee Sedol, uh, the one of the world best players of the game Go, lost against IBM's Deep, Mi uh, Google's Deep Mind, I should say. Uh, and you can see the looks on their faces um, as they realize they are losing against the computer. Um, Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk are particularly worried about AI uh, taking over the world, a super intelligent, uh, existentially aware computer taking over the world and controlling all of our systems. I'm going to bring it back to kind of me because I'm a poet and that's what we do. Um, I am slightly worried about creativity. Uh, art is often seen as safe from computers. How can computers be creative? But since the invention of computers, we have been making work with them, not just as tools, but creating programs to create art. Um, so these are a couple of artificially intelligent poems uh, that I wanted to show off to you guys. That's the, the computer beat poet, ignore that. Um, so this is a Twitter bot called PoemEXE, and this makes beautiful haiku, like basho level, uh, kind of master level haiku. Haiku, traditional Japanese poetry, very meditative, thoughtful about nature. Um, scattered stars. The pearls of bright dew, a night boat, so pleasantly cool. Lovely. Uh, soft drizzle, they hold up one hand, a deep resonance. Yeah, think about that. Uh, we also have uh, early morning, some cherry petals, the angels above must be bored. Oh, I'm, I'm hearing some poetry mm, in the audience, yeah. It's really deep stuff, it's lovely. Uh, and last one I want to show you, the moon is cool, hush the heart with drenched sweat. Now, these are excellent poems. These are beautiful haiku created entirely by an algorithm on Twitter. Uh, there's a poem which recently, in a lot of tech uh, journals, go on, click, click, um, called Poetry Generator. This is a published poem, the first artificially intelligent published poem in a student journal. Uh, it's called For the Bristlecone Snag. And it's, it's just so original and incredible. A home transformed by the lightning. The balanced alcove smother this insatiable earth of a planet. Earth. They attacked it with mechanical horns because they love you, love in fire and wind. You say, what is the time waiting for in its spring? I tell you it is waiting for your branch that flows because you are a sweet smelling diamond architecture. 
that does not know why it grows. And this is incredible. Like, we write in cliches as humans so often. When we go to poetry, I think that's what we do. This is the most uncliched bit of verse you've ever seen. So they're original, they're inventive, and they're incredibly creative. I think they are real. They kind of speak to us in some way in the way that art should do. In the same way that we appreciate that Grand Theft Auto video as speaking to us and our appreciation of landscapes, I think we appreciate these as poems as well. So I am worried. Um, we cannot compete with computers because of their computational power. It massively outstrips our ability to, to create things. Say you wanted to write a poem for your boyfriend, or you asked me to write a poem for your boyfriend. I will charge you a couple of days' worth of work to come up with something beautiful and precise for him. But a computer could bash a hundred of these out in a minute, and you could just choose one. So how can I compete with that? Uh, we're very much like the American legend of John Henry. John Henry is famously laid, tr he was a rail ro uh, railroad worker. He laid track along into continental USA. He was confronted with a steam powered machine that could lay track quicker, it was claimed, than a man. So he had a famous race against this steam powered track laying machine and he won, he did, but he died doing it, the sheer exertion of fighting this machine. And I feel that's where we're at now with creativity. We may be just one step ahead of the machines, but they are catching up very quickly. You can't stop progress, as Callum mentioned. So um, one fortunate thing is that artificial intelligence cannot decide what good art is. Fortunately, humans can't decide what good art is either. Uh, we're constantly asking the question, what is art? Is this good? Uh, these are just headlines from the last week questioning what art is. So fortunately, we can put ourselves into the gap there. But we do, we do decide what art gets out into the public through this kind of nebulous combination of popularity and press coverage, of marketing and meaning, of originality and old successes, of reputation and relevance. We're hardwired for creativity. We will always make music. We will always make, tell stories. It's an evolutionary desire that we have. So of course there will always be artists, even in the age of computers. And what artists are spectacularly good at is innovating, pushing the boundaries. So I think we're okay. I think what we've got to do is take advantage of these advances, find new ways to make work, possibly in collaboration with artificial intelligence. It provides opportunities for us, new languages to speak in. Uh, this is my favorite computer language, uh, emoji, of course. Um, so I'm gonna end with a poem using a brand new language. I've written an entire poem in emoji. Uh, they are quite hard to rhyme. I've given it a go. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I think we're okay. I think we can come up with innovative, creative, new responses to technology. And I think, I think we'll be okay, you guys. So one final emoji poem for you. It goes like this. A house party. It's arty, farty, full of hipsters. <laughs> posers. And a couple of jokers and a girl, a boy, eyes meet. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be a lot of this, guys, I'm glad you laughed at that. A smile returned, it's sweet. He waves like a tool. <laughs> be cool, she thinks, he walks, he talks, a drink. Yep, she says, be back soon. <laughs> so cute, it's so cute. <laughs> he says. Two beers, clink, cheers, and then nothing. Silence, they're tongue-tied. It's awkward. I think this is the noise you make when things are awkward. Mm. <laughs> kind of making that noise inwardly. Now, um, she says, okay, why did the chicken shoot the comedian? He rolls his eyes, she replies, because chicken's sick of their crossing road bullshit. He sighs, oh man. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so nerdy, he says, but ice broken, they laugh. The music is cheesy. Uh, the Spice Girls, uh, wet, wet, wet. Uh, the Monkees, the Beatles, Four Tops. Any, any guesses? What do you think? Anyone? Grease. Very well played, Grease soundtrack, excellent. Uh, this is the rest of my 20 minute presentation, by the way, I just have 400 of these queued up. Um, <laughs> any guesses, any guesses? Oh, Smashing Pumpkins, very nice. Uh, the Doors, uh, the Scissor Sisters, Talking Heads, uh, obviously. Uh, loads of people just doing the, 
Conga. <laughs> they dance. It's a whirlwind romance. They talk, hold hands all night from sunset to first light. They kiss. Oh. They wish the party would last forever. It doesn't. Uh, they swap numbers. Uh, he says goodbye, that wave again, and he leaves. <laughs> Forgets his coat. <laughs> and he leaves. The night bus home, she checks her phone. Message received, it's really small. Of all the emojis he could have sent, just one says it all. Thank you. Aww. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Thank you.